impacts and consequences it has on performance as well as um, uh, in the community. So I'd like to start off with sort of a, a web of, uh, of sleep, why sleep matters. And if you look, we can see different type of boxes. The first three in the top are really of um, a bi-directional relationship of sleep. So what sleep can affect and what can affect sleep. So uh, the first box on the left is the uh, mental health. So acute stress, anxiety, PTSD, PTSI. Individual behaviors, these are things that um, an individual do either at work or at, at home on their off shift. Hopefully not uh, alcohol, though in other countries they can have uh, alcohol on shift. Um, small quantities of beer. But uh, alcohol, any stimulants, drugs, and of course nutritional and, and diet. Physical health, obesity, immune function, and cardiovascular system. These all impact sleep and sleep impacts um, these areas. So the middle two boxes, these are what um, are exogenous factors that basically what can affect sleep at, at work. So we have things that are organizational characteristics, um, individual uh, call volume or burden, which is maybe a few different things, frequency of calls, duration, the type of call. We can have a shift schedule, so this is the unique patterns of work and non-work days, and there's a variety out there, as you guys uh, know. And shift start time, what impact does this have on sleep pattern and the consequences of sleep? At work, um, if there's a firefighter that has just one particular station that they're assigned to, or if they rotate stations, and could have several different sleeping environments. Um, one maybe that's conducive to what they like, or one maybe that's not. Uh, we'll get into this a little bit uh, later, but uh, odor, temperature, light, sound, and comfort, basically the five senses, except for taste. I don't think we're tasting anything. Um, any of these five senses basically can impact your environment and, and your sleep. So these need to be also considered at, uh, at work. And of course, this is really the, the bottom two rows, really mainly what we're focused on. A lot of people don't really care too much about sleep. Rather, it's the consequences that sleep causes. So this could be performance, um, both cognitive and physical performance. And here's just one example of an EMS crash uh, years ago. And it's sad to say that some of these EMS crashes uh, occurred just outside of the emergency department. There have been both patients and uh, EMTs, paramedics that have died due to sleep deprivation. So let's look at sleep a little bit. Okay, so this uh, illustration, this have a little, sure. uh, let's see. Okay, so the blue here represents uh, movement. So this is activity, basically like a Fitbit. So we take that data and illustrate it on a um, activity uh, strip. The pink and the green represent uh, sleep. So here, this uh, uh, individual went to bed about 10 o'clock. That spike right here represents uh, basically getting up, going back, bathroom, brushing teeth right before they, they go to bed. And so little movement throughout the night, and then right at 6 o'clock in the morning, wake up and carry on your day. So this represents basically normal sleep, what you might get on sort of a weekend or just an individual, maybe a non-firefighter. So let's look at how far to sleep at work. Looking at the top illustration, you can see that uh, this individual went to bed right after midnight. You see the same um, spike in blue here, preparing to go to bed. Had a little bit of tossing turning, and then this blue activity, what do you guys think that was? Call. Yep. So call, and then came back, went to bed, and had another call, and then slept until about 6 o'clock. So next trip. Same about uh, a little bit before midnight, went to bed, had a, had a uh, fire, and then came back to the station and uh, was not able to, to sleep again. So you can see that that sleep opportunity was shortened. And here we have a little bit of uh, um, both cases on the bottom strip where they go to bed uh, about 9 o'clock in, in the evening, try to get some pre free naps. This really generally doesn't work out um, too favorably. You can see some tossing and turning here and uh, quite a bit at the beginning. They get a call um, at around midnight. They come back to sleep and then here they're tossing and turning while sleeping. 
They get up to the bathroom, they come back to bed and experience a significant toss and a turn in while sleeping. And then they wake up at six o'clock. So these three are typically what we see. Um, and depending on how severe this is, you might see something like this on the first off day at home. Went to bed about 11 o'clock and then woke up about 10.30 at almost 11 o'clock. So 12 hours and you see very little blue activity during that sleep. So they were out. 